a massive recruiting ground for the British Army. In order to build an empire, the British state became a colossal war-making machine, and to satisfy its demand for ever greater numbers of men, it turned to the Highland clans. Now, this gave the opportunistic Simon Fraser the perfect way to impress his new masters. Historian Andrew McKillop is taking me to Cameron Barracks in Inverness. It's here that thousands of Highland soldiers began life in the British Army. Just 11 years after their defeat at Culloden, the Frasers won a number of decisive victories that helped expand Britain's empire. Following their example, other former Jacobite clans were quick to join up. Military service would dramatically transform the fortunes of both the chiefs and their clansmen. Andrew, the Battle of Culloden wasn't the end of the great Highland military tradition, was it? Well, far from it. Um, if anything, all that happens is that the state takes over the management of it. The British state has an awful lot of manpower needs. It's fighting major wars in Europe, and of course it's got its empire to look after. Um, under those circumstances, the need for manpower is so acute that effectively the government turns to um, ex-Jacobite leaders, like the young Lovett, and offer them commissions to raise regiments for manpower, almost primarily for service in North America. Um, and when that happens, the experiment works very effectively. Lovett is able to raise well over 500 men in a matter of three, four days, um, and that's pretty unprecedented. It kind of confirms to the government their wisdom of turning to their old enemies um, for the purposes of mobilising soldiers. For the ordinary clan's folk, military service holds out the prospect of either gaining security of tenure and land um, on the Lovett estates in Scotland, or even better, that after their military service in North America, they will be given land by the government in newly won colonies. Let's have a look inside. Aha, good old-fashioned army barracks. It's very spartan. But what you're saying, Andrew, is that army life was a very attractive proposition to Highlanders back in the 18th century. So attractive, in fact, that by the 1800s you have 30 to 40,000 Highlanders in, in British Army service. Now that's an enormous number. When you think of the fact that the Highlands only has around 300,000 people in it, you're looking at an extraordinary yeah. amount yeah. of manpower. The fact is the army's taking over. Um, a lot of the roles which were normally associated or had been associated with clanship and the chiefs. But I think at a cultural level, it also enables a society where fighting had always been culturally important for young men. Um, it provides an outlet for that. Um, and also it's changing loyalties. You're, you're seeing a shift away from a very, um, uh, a very kind of regional sense of loyalty to chiefs and to clans to a wider sense of allegiance to the state. The state becomes, in a sense, the new chieftain. So how did this affect Simon Fraser's fortunes? Well, he has an extraordinarily successful career. I mean, by 1746-47, he's an attainted rebel. But now, by the time he dies in 1782, he's, he's a major general of the British Army. I mean, you can't get any more establishment than that. Um, he lives in Downing Street in London. I mean, again, there's another, there's another irony. And he's a, he's a personal friend of the, the British Prime Minister. Um, I mean, military service has, has effectively made him um, uh, an integral part of the British establishment. So it's kind of arrived, really? Very much so. In 1774, General Simon Fraser had risen to such prominence that he was able to secure his ultimate objective, the return of his ancestral lands. Not bad going for a man who spent a year imprisoned in Edinburgh Castle as a Jacobite rebel after the Battle of Culloden. Simon's road to recovery was built on naked ambition and ruthless self-interest but would never have been possible without the unique fighting qualities of Clan Fraser. General Simon Fraser of Lovett began a new military tradition. Successive clan chiefs would raise regiments to fight for king and country, recruiting men from their Highland estates to serve the British Empire. This impressive war memorial in Bewley isn't just to the fallen, men who lost their lives in the Boer War in South Africa between 1900 and 1902. It also commemorates the raising of unique Highland regiment, the Lovett Scouts, and the inscription tells the whole story. Erected by the Lovett tenantry 
to commemorate the raising of the Lovett Scouts for service in South Africa by Simon Joseph, 16th Lord Lovett. He's a direct descendant of Simon the Fox and Simon the General. Now that's a celebration of a clan chief, a Fraser clan chief, raising a regiment in the 20th century. Fort George was built following the Battle of Culloden as a reminder of the government's determination to enforce its rule over the Highlands. Ironically, it's now home to a museum dedicated to the Highland soldiers whose ancestors once fought against the state. I want to ask military historian Diana Henderson how the skills of the men who lived and worked on Highland estates were used to create a modern British army. What do you think the Fraser clan chief's thinking was in recruiting the Lovett Scouts? Well, I mean, in South Africa, they were fighting a guerrilla war. And if you wanted to fight a guerrilla war, you had to fight it with guerrilla tactics. Uh -huh. And in order to uh, recruit men, they needed specialists. They needed people who were good at reading ground, people who were good at uh, shooting, people who were good at observation. Um, and here, Paul, you've got uh, the Lovett Scouts exhibition um, here in, in Fort George. And you can see the transition between uh, the old colourful uniforms uh -huh. and, and suddenly they're into khaki, they're into disguising themselves, they're into guerrilla tactics. These were men who were used to stalking deer and being patient in salmon fishing and uh, all the things that make up Highland Estate. And then they carried this on into the First World War where uh, the Lovett Scouts were used as observers in small groups and they would go forward, they would recce, they would suss the enemy out, they would creep right forward into the enemy positions. They were very, very skilled men, and it had come from the land. It had come from here in the Highlands. At the start of the 20th century, the Fraser's clan chief had seen that the unique qualities of the Highland soldier could play a vital role in a new age of warfare. The success of the Lovett Scouts in the Boer War and the First World War led to the incorporation of their unique fighting skills into the British Army's elite forces. And by the Second World War, Lord Lovett, the 25th Clan Fraser Chief, was playing a key role in training Britain's commandos. The Highlands suddenly became a very important area for training volunteers. We had 250,000 acres to train over, and we were given as much ammunition as high explosive as was needed for blowing things up and shooting at each other, and we really conducted a, a war all our own. And the ones who couldn't make it were, were given the sack and sent back to their regiments. The elite forces who were trained by this renowned Fraser clan chief are still remembered in the Highlands today. In the 12th century, Lord Lovett's great ancestor arrived from Normandy to settle in Scotland and gave rise to a great Highland clan. Throughout their long history, the Frasers have won and lost on the battlefield, but their name has become a byword for both honour and courage. On the 6th of June 1944, the Fraser's extraordinary military campaign came full circle when Lord Lovett landed on Sword Beach during the invasion of Normandy at the head of his commando brigade. Lord Lovett had come back to where Clan Fraser had started, the descendant of a Norman knight who'd fought with the kings of Scotland and of Simon the Fox, who'd been executed for treason, was now helping to liberate Normandy. And at his side, his piper played, the Lovetts march to war. <laughs> 